Hands. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Sherry Shriner. Oh, a couple of things I want to talk about tonight. You know, it's, I'm tired tonight. You know, I'm just wiped out. Um, I had to deal with one of their umpteenth number of assassination attempts all day yesterday. So I really wasn't surprised to see that they had taken out the director of WikiLeaks. Because they probably have a list. <laughs> Or George Soros just grew a pair and decided to come up against me. I've been talking about his little rat nest in New York, uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral, and Soros and Rockefeller not taking a liking to that very well. And teaming up with Bush Sr. and Elon Musk's satellites and trying to hit me with a heart attack. It was actually even worse than the one I had in October, and I thought, I'm not going to the hospital. I'm just going to wait this out. You know, I'm taking pills, uh, taking the aspirin, because what do they do at the hospital? And I already have a stint in, so what else are they going to do, you know? I just wrote it out and wiped me out pretty much for the day, but here I am. Uh, And it was fun because... uh, You know, when you come up against me, you're going to make the father a little mad. (laughs) I don't think they'll be meeting at St. Patrick's basement anymore. (laughs) That and their other little favorite hideout somewhere in New York. I'm not even sure which one that is that was taken out, but both of them were taken out. Uh, Good times, folks. You know, I've spent the last couple of weeks Painting the world we live in, trying to give, you know, give you guys a, a, an open book view of what goes on. You know, the father stood me up years ago, but I've had a prophet's calling on my life since I was born, and that's why I was such so under attack, even even as a child. I've always been targeted. And you know when you're a targeted individual compared to everybody else because there's just nothing that seems normal about your life compared to everybody else's. You're just not like everybody else. And and you hear that a lot about the elect that are here that are, and, and Christians themselves. They just don't want to be a part of this world. They just want to go home. And you know what, it's hard when you just never even feel like you belong here. And on top of that, just always having something, someone trying to kill you. Uh, it just goes on and on and on until I leave. That's how it's going to be, because I'm a big mouth. You know, I'll expose their plans and what they do. And, and the thing about it is, you know, I've been on the blacklist. Since 2004. So who do they think is listening? <laughs> As I sit here and, and, and expose every detail about the New World Order or the Ashtar Commander or Satan and how he runs things, who's listening? You know? A couple thousand people? Does it scare them that much that even a few thousand people that just stumble upon me, the Father leads to me to teach, are hearing these truths because they're going to be fathers anyway. They're not going to get them anyway. They're fathers. (sighs) And there's no humans left in D.C., so who am I going to go after to convert to change sides? There's, There's no fun in that anymore because all the humans are gone. There's no humans to convert. (laughs) Uh, You know, I've been sitting here waiting like everybody else all month long for the bombs to drop. You know, I'm well aware Obama's never going to leave office. If Hillary takes office, we're going to be in war. If Trump takes office, He'll probably just be assassinated or whatever. I mean, you know, all these different routes. Plans change like the wind. They change like the wind. 
So that's how we just sit and wait to see exactly what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> they don't even take up positions, so I'm not either. I'm just going to sit and wait. Because they throw out bunny rabbits and bunny trails and, and roads and routes to see which one they're even going to take. You know? Nothing's ever set in stone until it actually happens. And that's why in the Bible codes you can see various things happening. Uh, that's because there's a route. And if there's a route, it's going to be in the codes. If there's a plan to assassinate Trump, it's going to be in the codes. If there's a plan to assassinate Hillary, it's going to be in the codes. The codes will list you all the routes, the plans that are going on in the background. But you can't use the codes to say this is a definite, this is going to happen. Until it already happens, because all the other routes are still listed. You have to understand how the codes work. I get tired of people sending me stuff about Bible codes. I don't want to look at anybody else's work. I do my own. I know I'm anointed for the codes. I'm not going to waste my time on everybody else's slop work. Especially the Pentagon. (laughs) So we've all been waiting, waiting... Is WikiLeaks going to drop the bomb on Hillary? You know, I I told you back, for those of you who have been around forever like me, back in 2008 when when Hillary was running against Obama, and even back in 2003, 2004, even before she was senator of New York, in the Bible codes I saw that Hillary would be president. And I talked about it back then. And what she would do as president is lead our country into war with Iran, with Korea. And she would sign the sovereignty of our country over to the United Nations. So here comes 2008. And Obama steals the election from Hillary. That was a classic. (laughs) Outright stole it from her. And so we... Instead of going into world wars, he's put us in piddly Islam wars everywhere and has destroyed our country from the ground up. But that was his job, to dismantle, disarm, and destroy America. That's been his job. He's brought his little Muslim Brotherhood crap in here. He's not even a Muslim. You know, I know he's part of the Muslim Brotherhood, and he brings all these Muslims in and stuff, but Obama himself is not a Muslim. He's not a Muslim. He doesn't take any position in any religion. (laughs) He's one of the most willful waffle people you'll ever meet. He wants to be on the fence. He wants one foot on this side and the other foot on the other side. And he hovels the fence. He's a fence rider. He doesn't want to make any decision. It takes him forever to make a decision. Hillary, on the other hand, will most likely still have the status quo of, of if she is elected, coming in, putting us through a war. The most important thing about her to the other side is that she will sign America over to the United Nations. And I have been warning for umpteen centuries now. <laughs> Just kidding. Feels that way. That it is the leader of Babylon that is the Antichrist. And that it didn't necessarily mean the president of America, but the leader of Babylon. The leader of America. And so if Hillary signs the power and authority of America over to the UN, it is the leader of the UN who then becomes the leader of Babylon, who becomes the leader of America. And who would that be? Well, this is where your little alien friends come in. The New Ages call them Ascended Masters. 
you know. And 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 that's basically the other side that they're fighting now, the the waiting for the bomb to drop, whether they're arriving or not. Eventually they'll get here. And eventually they're gonna take over the UN. It's not when or if it's when. It's 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 when do they arrive? When are they gonna arrive? Eventually they will. Because they represent the age of Aquarius. And the age of Pisces has ended. And the age of Aquarius begins, and we go into this new age, blah, blah, building Satan's kingdom on earth. All prophesied. People just got to get their beasts aligned. Fernando will take over the Vatican, because that's usually where he is anyway now that Lucifer has been in quarantine. Maitreya will take over the Muslims. He's their Muslim. I am coming. Jermaine takes over the UN economies through the, through the UN. He takes over all the economies. He's the one behind the RV, what they call the GCR, what they call Nasera, what they call Gusera now. The National Economic Reformation. Now you got the Global Economic Reformation. Nasera and Jessera. That is all part of the Ashtar agenda, the New Age agenda, the Age of Aquarius agenda, however agenda you want to look at it. I've always referred to it as the New Age alien agenda. And so people are hyped, and they're pumping, they they want to get rid of the New World Order cabal, all those who represent Soros and, and the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, the Bushes, the Clintons. The whole clan of nest of them, the whole reptilian nest. They want to wipe out what they call the cabal. They call them the cabal because they follow the Kabbalah. They're fake Jews, Kazarian Jews, and they're all bloodline Illuminati families. They, they stay busy with their child trafficking. You know, before John, John Kerry became Secretary of State, Everybody has a hustle in the New World Order. When you serve Satan, you have a ministry. And John Kerry's was snuff films. He's done that for eons. And if you don't know what a snuff film is, that's one they take these children that they kidnap and abduct out of streets and countries all over the world. And they rape and they kill them on camera get these on video and then they market them they sell the tapes because this, who call themselves the elite these Satan freaks get off on that kind of thing sitting and watching children get raped and then killed and those are called snuff films and John Kerry has always been a big leader in the snuff industry and he was rewarded by giving the State Department title. He is now Secretary of State. So if you wonder why every time you, you can't help yourself but gag every time you look at him, that's why. He's a scumbag. He's a scoundrel. They also have predominantly what most of you have heard by now is cloning centers. And these are in various locations across the country. And what they do is they take people out of their sleep. They take your soul out. You end up at one of these, what they call cloning centers. And they're like auditoriums. They're like an arena. They're set up like arenas. But instead of a hockey or a basketball court or something at the bottom, it's usually something more nefarious at the bottom, usually tables where they put people on them and torture them. Or they, they, they do a number of things. But I, I, I know that they're just set up like arenas. That's their mimicry of what the Ashtar 
and galactic flea and all these ascended masters that the New Agers praise and worship and adore. If they think these guys are any better than the cabal we're getting rid of, they're, they're really short a crayon in the box because that's who they learned it from. If you think the cabal and everything the Illuminati stands for is just despicable and criminal, their teachers were the Ashtar Command. That's who their teachers were. So if you think we're going to leave the Age of Pisces and go into an Age of Bliss, you've got to be kidding. You've got to be kidding. Nobody knows true evil like they do. Because these beings are completely 100% evil. These beings are the kinds you can't even be five feet from without wanting to puke and vomit. If you're sensitive to energies and you're sensitive to evil, you will puke. That is how bad they are. Maybe that's why they smell like sulfur, because they get puked on all day. I don't know. They smell like sulfur because they're from hell. But they're the teachers. They're the parents. They're the offspring. You know, the Ashtar Command is just a, a, the panel. If you ever heard the song... Kashmir by Led Zeppelin talks about a panel in space and, and they're looking down on earth and at, the, and, and, and at the end of the days all will be revealed it talks about this council this panel in space that's, that's, that's pretty representative of what this Ashtar command is because it's made up of about 11 individuals one woman, because Eve is on it. Lilith is a part of it, but she probably won't arrive with them. She'll, she'll be around, but she won't. She can't manifest in this dimension. I don't even think she'll be seen when dimensions merge. I'm not sure. Maybe? I don't know. I think if that was the case, she would just go ahead and arrive with them. I guess maybe she's going to be the Chinese girl. <laughs> maybe she's the, the Asian girl that shows up that they've added to the to the list of Ashtar Command. I don't know. I don't know. That'll be funny. I wouldn't doubt it because she is the mother of the Asian races. They are her kids. She had them here on Earth with Adam before she was banished off the Earth. That's why they're not like us folks. Not the same fathers, not the same cloth. They're just different people. They're not sons of Adam. They can be saved. They can be redeemed. But if you want to know why the cultures are so different, that's why. Because they're different parents. Eve was not their mother. Adam was not their father. So this Ashtar command, this council that that is representative of, of ruling in space, ruling over the earth their main home planet star is Shima you guys ask how do I know all this stuff well the father has taught me this stuff for years he has showed me this, these places I've talked to these people I've seen these things their main star is Shima it's been stuck on the border of Ohio and PA since 2008 and I started pointing orgone pipes at it and malfunctioned it. And it couldn't move. <laughs> it's been stuck there since on fire. I don't know exactly to the extent of the fire. But when you look at it, it's just a yellow ball. But at Shima, they have what they call fun centers. And with Sananda and Maitreya and Jermaine and Eve and all these beings that the New Age is relegating as godlike and divine beings and ascended masters full of wisdom, love and light and blah, blah, blah. You know what they do up there? They abduct humans off the earth. They send the greys down. Who do you think the greys work for? They're the kids. They send the greys down. 
They abduct humans off the earth, never to be seen or heard of again. And they take them to Shima. And in Shima, they put them in these fun centers. And these fun centers are the exact same mimicry of what they call cloning centers here. They're arenas. And they line the arena part, the open bottom part, up with tables. And they put these abducted humans on these tables. And they torture them, and they do various horrible things to them or they make them fight you've seen that on TV typically prison movie type things where they put two in a cage and make them fight one has to kill the other they do all kinds of stuff there's nothing new under the sun folks the cabal didn't come up with this stuff on their own they were taught it by the Ashtar command so if people think we're heading into a better world of the Ascended Masters, oh, I don't know what else I could possibly say to wake you up. Another thing they adopted from was from the House of Horrors, the Vatican. Because when Israel was in Egypt being slaves and being slaves in Babylon and always being carried off somewhere to be slaves because they could never behave. And the father would judge them, send them war, and they would be overtaken and overcome by their enemies and carted off somewhere. Other nefarious history was taking place. Lucifer was in Rome. Vatican City, what we know as Vatican City, and he had a huge underground city there. And that's where he was setting up his home on Earth, was in Vatican City. They actually built Vatican City just right on top of Lucifer's underground city. So they're both connected. And this is where Lucifer set up his little house of horrors. This is where he takes humans that they've abducted and and they torture and kill them. And this is fun for them. They, they delight in it. They, they delight in it. This, this is what he does. If you saw the movie Hannibal... Silence of the Lambs was probably one of my favorite series that ever came out. And when I first saw it, I couldn't understand why I was so glued to the series. Uh, probably because it had a lot of truth in it that I didn't realize at the time. I just thought it was so alarmingly wicked. You know, you just wanted to see more of it. What happens at the end? What happens in part two, three? You know, it's one of these series you could just keep watching. But Hannibal, Hannibal. That took the icing, because in, in Hannibal, he has this house, and, and his house guest is sitting around the table, and, and the father had, had, has told me that, you know, at the Vatican, the Pope, he eats off of his plate, is actually the bone, the hip bone of a human, the human hip bone, that's their plate, they eat off human hip bones, and their cups are skulls. They plug the holes in of the mouth and nose and the eyes. They're actual real skulls. And those are their cups. Yeah, this is your righteous Pope Francis, whatever. They're all just so beyond evil. And in, in Hannibal, he has this house guest. I can't go through the whole movie. I don't even remember it, but I remember this part. And, and he's having him eat these delicacies. He actually cut off part of this guy's brain and he cooked it and then set it on his plate for him to eat he's eating it doesn't even realize he's eating his own parts of his brain okay now that's crazy right this stuff really goes on this stuff really goes on that's why it's called the house of horrors because you can't even imagine the stuff that goes on there 
Well, you may get invited into Vatican, but whether you leave or not is up to them. I heard that straight from the horse's mouth himself. Uh, and guess who, guess who loves being a guest to Vatican? The queen lizard herself. She loves the Vatican. They love partying with Lucifer. One horror after the next. You ever saw that that movie Hellraiser? And that that Pindar, I think I think his name's Pindar, the guy with all the hooks and pins sticking out of him. That's that's actually real. That's actually true. And 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 there's a room in hell, this area called in hell, called the Hook Room, where the where humans that have died and gone to hell are taken and, and stuck up on these hooks and they're tortured with pins and needles and nails and everything else they stick in them. It's called the Hook Room. That's actually a real place. So it was kind of odd to see it hitting Hollywood. You know, somebody in Hollywood was really getting the info. The stuff that they portray is just smack on. Everybody thinks it's fiction, but it's actually disclosure because the stuff exists. It's real. And I'm not telling you all this off of your entertainment. I'm trying to show you the world you live in, what's really going on, what's really going on. And it's not going to get any better with these ascended masks. Because Sananda is the worst of the worst of the worst. They all are. They have absolutely zero percent God's light or, or, or God's DNA in them. Zero percent. Zero. So they're complete animals. Complete animals. I think a brute beast on earth would have more light in them than one of those things. That's on the Ashtar command. So they're the teachers, all right. They call themselves world teachers. My tray always calls, I don't everybody, CNN runs these commercials sometimes about the, the great coming world teacher in regards to my Treya. Yeah, this is what they taught them. <laughs> this is what they teach them in the background. How to torture and, and kill humans. How to, how to bake and eat babies. Father showed me once about this big commercial uh, chef pan, sheet, sheet pan. And there was like six babies lined up on it, and they'd put it in this big oven and bake them. He took it out, and they were all, they were all sitting at the table. Like it's a like it's Thanksgiving. Everybody's sitting around the table, feasting on these babies that they had just baked and killed. I mean, does it get any grosser than that? And and they 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 not just Shima. They have these bases that they call dining centers around the world. I mean, there was one just just over in Columbus, Ohio. Um, it was about. Uh, uh, it's outside Columbus. Rest assured, we were going to and destroyed it. Uh, but it was one of their dining centers. You know, and they have one of these dining centers uh, pretty much everywhere where they had these alien prisons. There was one in Moundsville, West Virginia, that we shut down. And there was uh, one in El Paso, one in San Antonio. There was two of them over by the lower western part of Texas. One was in El Paso, and then there was another one over there somewhere. Just all over Texas. Arizona, uh, the, the Chocolate Mountains, I think that's on the border of Arizona and California. Uh, they have these alien prison bases everywhere. And, and and they were huge. They could hold tens of thousands of humans. And that's why they love the open border policy, because they'd go and, and, and get a, collect all these Mexicans trying to cross the border. 
if you think the numbers here are bad of the people who made it, you should see the numbers that didn't, that never did, that came over, that disappeared. And that's why they liked the open border policy, because there was no papers work, there was no connections. You know, these people could be disappeared and abducted, and nobody knew where they were. The United States didn't have to claim any kind of responsibility because they had never been uh, picked up and held for detainment or anything, and, and, and Mexico didn't know where they were because they just disappeared. Well, that's that's why they, this, this has worked for them all these years. And I got this straight from D.C., straight from the horses themselves, on why they like the open border policy. Because they could disappear, thousands of them. Because that's what the aliens eat. Humans are alien food. And they don't care if you're white, black, purple, green. If you're human, they're going to eat you. They don't care. And that's why we spent so much of our time and money, any kind of donations I got in for years, just making up, making the orgo, making supplies, and, and getting the supplies out to warriors who could go shut alien bases down so they couldn't it wouldn't do them any good to abduct people they'd have to just stop abducting humans you know my entire ministry almost every time it comes in goes to this war goes to this war I don't drive a new vehicle. My kids go to crappy schools. I live in a shack on a hill. Because this earth doesn't mean anything to me. Doing Father's will does. And destroying Satan's strongholds on this earth is my mantle, is why I'm here. He doesn't scare me. I'm not afraid of him. I go way back with him. We go way back. And I found a way through orgone energy to destroy him. And that's what has destroyed him. There's not much time left, folks. Until the new teachers arrive. Aren't you excited? Because for those of you who thought that Oh, getting rid of this whole Nazi faction was going to mean so much more for our country. <laughs> I hate to say it, but they're not. They're, you haven't seen anything yet. They are like the quiet and the calm before the storm. <laughs> That's how, in comparison wise, I mean, if you think the you know, using the the most powerful army on the world to to run child trafficking and not get caught because who's you know what are the wolves going to police the wolves? The Pentagon's been the the largest child traffickers in the world. That's why they have uh, Africom and Northcom and Southcom because they they abduct children out of their villages, out of their homes, out of their countries, and they ship them to the Vatican, to the Queen Lizard, and to the United States. The Pentagon alone probably processes over a thousand kids just in the Pentagon amongst the officers and generals there themselves. They kill them on their lunch breaks. They go down and they rape and kill kids. That's what they do. The White House does it. Congress does it. They're all doing it, folks. How do you think Paul Ryan gets Speaker of the House? You have to earn your way up, and you do it by raping and killing kids. Mike Pence, that Indiana governor, the whole government in Indiana, is such an abomination on this planet. Tory Smith stood up to expose them, and they killed him. There was a my lab under the Indianapolis airport. All of the Indiana police are involved with protecting 
the child traffickers, child rapers, and killers, and they're all involved with it as well. Not all of them, but most of them. That's why none of these people ever get persecuted, arrested, and, and brought to trial, brought to justice, because of the judges, the prosecutors, the police, the government, the Pentagon. They're all involved. But now we get to meet their teachers, the ones who taught them how to do this. Because they're coming as divine, godlike beings. Isn't that special? The Cabal, Kazarians, all of them, the Illuminati, they're just bloodline. They're the offspring of these New Age ascended beings that are coming. The parents are coming now. You've just been dealing with the children. Isn't that special? Now you see why we, there, there's a shift in what the Bible calls the tribulation period. Why it only lasts seven years because they about kill everybody. People think when the RB and the GCR is announced and they're going to be millionaires overnight that they're going to go riding off in the sunset. They're going to be riding in one of their UFOs and taken into a freezer somewhere as food. Or you're going to go to these wealth management centers. I wouldn't go without CCW, I'm telling you, I don't care. Because I know what happens at these conferences. <laughs> you know, these people go to these wealth management conferences in Las Vegas all the time, right? Led by uh, all these supposed wealth financial managers and experts. And then and they have these conferences in Vegas and want all the rich people together and teach them how to manage and handle their money. Uh those are designed as bait and traps. If you have money, then they're going to convince you that they can help you manage it and protect it and hide it from the government who's going to steal it from them. But you have to go to their conferences and, 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 and you'll join the others who are hiding and protecting their money from a big bag of wolves. Big bad Uncle Sam. Well, what they do with these conferences is they get your number. Why don't you go to them? Half those people that go to them end up getting soul scalped. Or they're targeted and put on a list to be soul scalped. And they're murdered and they're taken over. Replaced. Yeah, that's what happens. You ever get invited on a yacht with the rich people? <laughs> do not go. You get invited on an airplane. You think, oh, you're in the big leagues now, the rich people. You're you're rubbing elbows with the rich people now because you got some money. They're gonna chew you alive. Who are you kidding? These ascended masters coming aren't gonna give you time to breathe and enjoy your money. If you were smart, you'd go out and buy orgone supplies and start making orgone. In fact, if you were smart, you'd do that now. You'd take your retirement money that they're just going to steal, that you're not going to get past September of 2017 because they're going to start enforcing chip implanting. You'd take it and buy Oregon and start getting the Oregon out because that is what destroys them. That's what's crashing their ships everywhere. It's the Oregon. You know, in September of 2017, and they're already starting it in Australia and some other countries. They've always done it in the Middle East. You're going to have to be chip implanted to access your bank account because everything's going digital. You're not going to have dollars stuffed in your mattress. It's going to have to be digital or it doesn't count. No one's going to accept cash. Everything's going to be based on the computers. So if it's not a number on a computer screen, then you don't have it. It's worthless. And they're going to even tighten that up even more to where if you don't have a chip implant to access your account, then you don't have it. You can't access it. You can't get your money. So so, you, so you've got millions in the bank, but the only way you can access it is if you get a chip in one of your hands. What do you do? Go hungry. <laughs> Go without. But a lot of people will bend to the pressure going to want their money, and when they do that, they give their soul to Satan, because if you get the mark of the beast, it 
gives your soul to Satan. And there's no forgiveness. There's no forgiveness for that fool. Actually, the target date is, two, is uh, September 2017. When are these asters going to arrive? I don't know. We're waiting now. We're always waiting for them. We're in a loop that just keeps circling around. <laughs> overcoming, overcoming, overcoming. <laughs> if you think we're sick of it, you should see the New Agers. They're waiting for their ascended masters, divine teachers to come. And they're actually thrilled and happy about it. Till they end up on their plates. Everybody's just waiting. The event. The event. Ascension. That's what they call it. Ascension. They're cannibals. They're murderers. They're despicable torturers. They have no human remorse or, or emotion. They don't even know what love is. All their emotions are fake. They're fake. Compassion is fake. It's all fake. And there's such narcissists that if you really want to see their true colors, piss them off. Make them mad. Because they'll lose it. They can only pull this for a nice guy charade for so long. <laughs> because their real natures are just royal hatred beasts. So, so, so they're always going to return to their true natures. And they will when they come down here. Because all they need is for the New Agers and the world to embrace them. They need acceptance. Yes, we want you to arrive. Yes, come. Make contact with mankind. And then once they get in this planet, they're never going to leave. Not until the Father himself destroys them. You shall destroy them all at his second coming. But that's a bit down the road, folks. And there's about six billion people alive on this planet that won't be by the time Yahushua arrives at the second coming, what we call the second coming of Christ. There's only going to be a fraction of the Earth's population alive by the time he arrives. That's how much destruction in such short of a time that takes place. The only hope you have is with Yahushua. That is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, why the churches went from a Jewish man, Yahushua ben David, changed his name to Jesus Christ, put pagan ceremonies instead of the appointed times and feasts, and called themselves the church age. We have been in an apostasy age. The churches are apostate. They're in apostasy. Not because of the name change. But because they're celebrating paganisms and honoring fertility goddesses instead of celebrating his anointed times and feasts that he established with mankind that Yahushua celebrated with his apostles while he was here. Who gave the churches permission to replace Passover with Easter. You introduced all these paganisms into the church. And Easter is a celebration of fertility goddess, which is Lilith. And y'all think, oh, well, I'm not going to acknowledge that, so that means it's not true. <laughs> Wake up, folks. Whether you acknowledge it or not, you're in apostasy. We need to return to our true roots. Mary was a Jewish girl. She wasn't Catholic. Yeshua wasn't Pentecostal. His name wasn't Jesus. Get out of the apostasies. Get back to the truth with our roots. Our roots are Jewish. They would argue that. About the name thing. They were Israelites. They didn't call themselves Jews. They called themselves Israelites. The Jews were from the tribe of Judah. And they called themselves Judahites. So where this Jew term came in, that's something from the middle of the century. That's something they came up with for the KJV. 
when they changed Jesus Christ, Yahushua's name to Jesus Christ, they changed the Judahites into Jews and Israelites. So we've got more work to do. We've got more more underground bases to target, more prisons to shut down. If not us, who? And how many more people are going to keep getting abducted and taken to these places because they're open for business? Because no one will go shut them down. Everybody lives in a different state and in a different country. Ask the Father to show you where it's at and go target it with Oregon. Because even if you pounded the top of a mountain with Oregon, that saturated air would be seeped inside the air supply inside that mountain and suffocate them, suffocate the aliens. They hate it. If you target the water supplies, the streams and the lakes and the ponds that seep into their underground bases, it poisons them. We get them more ways than one, folks. We just need to pound mountains and mountainous areas with Oregon. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know how you get to the, the Pentagon, my lab, which is straight underneath the Pentagon. I mean, I don't know how you do that. But we can pray and ask the Lord for destroy it for earthquakes. No one under the White House. I don't, I wouldn't know how to get into that either. But you can pray and ask the Lord to show you a way. Maybe Congress. We've already got them sick and tired of being orgoned in that city. They can't breathe the air, but they can hide. They can go under, under underground. Which is what they do. It's an altar to Baphomet underneath the Capitol, underneath Congress. That's how they prove their worthiness. That's how they get to be Speaker of the House. Isn't that right, Paul Ryan? And there's one over by Arlington Cemetery, the My Lab under there. I don't think they typically use the one under the White House very much. I think they go to the one over in Arlington. There used to be a huge city there. I destroyed it back in 2012. <laughs> Father did. He allowed us to. So I've had to meet at different my labs around the city because that, the temple city that was originally under D.C., huge underground city base, was destroyed. Mm-hmm. So what happens when they grow up here and come up against me? I get to retaliate. Keep me on the blacklist, will you? <laughs> I'll just keep destroying all their little toys. I don't care. Christians are asleep, but I'll tell you what, we've got everybody else's attention. Elon Musk and his little plasma bulbs. Satellites going up everywhere. Actually, he's just a, a pawn for that technology that's coming out. Because they've got Nibiru down in the south, south pole, so it's down south. And they've got some kind of some kind of tech where they're producing these plasma balls out of the surface of Nibiru. Because Nibiru is like a sun. Remember, I said it was the second sun. Lucifer wanted to use in his own heliocentric heaven. Heaven he wanted to create, he, Nibiru was going to be the sun. I just thought it was a big red rock. I had no idea it was actually a sun. Very well could be, though, because when you look at these pictures on that, on that video I posted on my Facebook last week of Nibiru, it looked like a fiery lava surface. That would be a sun. And it showed these plasma balls coming out off of the planet itself. And if you look at the sky and you see these red disco, what they call a disco star, it's always in the west at night. It's crazy, it's red and orange and yellow and dances around. They call it the disco star. Well, they've got blue ones just like it, except they're blue. I think these are the, these are the satellites that I was hearing about Elon Musk and Bush Sr. that they had been putting up and out satellites. If you can put uh, beings in them, there's, there's a, the center of it's like a rectangular structure, and that's probably where the beings operate, because I know they sit in there and spy like a regular satellite. I've heard them talk. 
I know that red disco star is a, is a satellite. There's beings in there that they, they use it as a regular satellite. It's like an upgrade from the Neanderthal archaic satellites that NASA uses now. Now they're using these pulse bars, these, these, these pulse stars, these balls. They use them just like regular satellites, and they spy on people. Yeah, this is the stuff that's going on, folks. The quiet before the storm, the calm before the storm, because if people think the New World Order idiots are bad, you haven't seen anything yet. You wait until these ascended masters arrive. Anyway, just giving a shout out, some warnings about that. <sighs> and we just wait. We just wait to the ticking bomb to see what they're going to do until elections. They already have alliances and pacts with Obama out the yin, so I can't imagine they want to have to start all over again with somebody else. They already have a long relationship with. Anyway, till next week, everybody. God bless.